Welcome back, Keeper. Dungeon Keeper, developed by Mythic Entertainment and published by EA, is a free-to-play, long-haul tower defence game that takes both name and concept from Bullfrog's 90s PC classic. The original PC title was creative and witty, one of the first games to turn the tables and cast the player as an evil protagonist, a mechanic that few have attempted and even fewer have succeeded to do well since. The core concept is straightforward. Build an expand and underground lair, kitting it out with traps to defend against unwanted guests. So far, so good. It all kicks off with a brief tutorial delivered by your demonic mentor, voiced by Richard Ridings, reprising his role from the original game. It starts out well. Your dungeon heart lies at the centre of the map, surrounded by dirt tiles which can be dug out to make way for a labyrinth of corridors and new rooms. Your imps scurry off to do your bidding, claiming gold mines and stone quarries, digging out new areas and constructing traps and doors. Every action takes a short time to complete, ranging from a few seconds to dig out a dirt block to a couple of minutes to lay down a new room or trap. The tutorial helpfully notes that you can spend a few gems to speed up progress. Building new rooms unlocks access to new traps and new minions. Traps can be placed to defend against incoming invasions, whilst minions are summoned to lead your own invasion against other players. Unlike the real-time gameplay of its PC ancestor, the mobile game uses a slightly different mechanic. The campaign mode allows you to alternatively attack and defend against a string of NPC keepers, whilst the find opponent option allows you to send your minions on the rampage in another player's dungeon. As you'd expect, constructing rooms and traps and summoning minions requires resources. These come in the form of gold and stone, generated over time by your mines and quarries respectively. Successfully raiding another player's dungeon allows you to steal some of their stockpiled resources. At the same time, yours are equally vulnerable to other players. At the end of the tutorial, you'll enjoy a couple of glorious minutes rearranging your dungeon, digging out new corridors, laying traps, and perhaps sending your minions to plunder another keeper's domain. Fans of the original game will note that it's not quite the same, but there is enough of the original in the witty put-downs, wanton abuse of your imps, and general feel to keep their interest. Newcomers, on the other hand, will be intrigued by how different the game feels to anything they've played before. The whole experience quickly turns sour. During the tutorial, the few gems that it takes to instantly finish construction of your first rooms or to summon your first minions gives a deceiving impression of the game's pace. Building rooms and traps requires either gold or stone, and the presence of an imp. The seconds or minutes that it takes to complete early construction rapidly turns into 30 minutes, an hour, 4 hours, 24 hours. You start with two imps, but within moments they'll be tied up and you'll be left twiddling your thumbs. Sure, you could summon an army and raid a few other players, but even this takes time and gold. Eventually, you'll want to expand your dungeon to make way for new rooms. The centre area of the map is comprised of dirt, which is easily taken care of, but expanding beyond this requires digging through gem veins that will take four hours. That's four hours for a single block, or just over two and a half days to dig out enough space for a 4x4 room. The longer something takes, the more gems it costs to instantly complete. We're no longer talking one or two, we're talking double or triple figures, and they are ridiculously difficult to obtain without spending a significant amount of real-world cash through the in-app purchase system. £2.99 will buy you 500 enough to rush production of a couple of mid-level rooms or to dig out two hard gem blocks. You can slap your imps to double their speed, but the effect only lasts half an hour, requiring you to check in constantly to retain the benefit. This game throws up paywalls at every turn, and in doing so, removes any sense of enjoyment. It's hard to look at this game in isolation from the wider debate around free-to-play and in-app purchases, but having played a massive number of mobile games, I can say with some experience that Dungeon Keeper is one of the worst examples. There's just no game here, and engaging with it over any sustained period left me feeling more like the tortured than the torturer. There are plenty of other issues with the game too, ranging from crashes to poor balancing. Raiding another player's dungeon is great in theory, but often the cost of summoning your army outweighs the reward, making it a completely pointless exercise. Part of the reason for this is that even when your units complete a successful raid, they're gone for good and have to be replaced. Defending isn't much better. Whilst you're away from the game, there's a chance that another player might raid your dungeon. If their attempt is successful, they'll make off with a slice of your stone and gold reserves, and you get an 8-hour cave-in bonus, which prevents you from being attacked again. If the attempt fails, you don't get the bonus, and are open to further attacks this time without the benefit of your highly effective single-use traps that may have been triggered during the first failed attempt. Time then for my verdict. Dungeon Keeper has so much promise and fails to deliver on just about all of it. 
I'll say again, that isn't a game here. There are one or two nice touches, the taunting voiceovers successfully replicate the comedic charm that Bullfrog became known for, the graphics are pretty decent, and most importantly, it demonstrates that this type of game could be successfully delivered on a mobile platform. An EA spokeswoman told the BBC that internal testing proved that it could be enjoyed as a completely free experience. I don't doubt that with heroic patience it is possible to progress freely through the game. I do doubt whether such progress could be described as enjoyable by any normal person. Ultimately there's no fun to be found here. I feel quite generous giving it one star, but there is just a flicker of something in the game's otherwise lifeless eyes. Maybe it's nostalgia. Dungeon Keeper is available for iOS and Android devices. At least as a free to play title, you've got nothing to lose if you want to download it and see for yourself. Thank <laughs> you.